Hi friends, it's Dana here. Today it is still summer science time and I am gonna share with you a story about someone who is a scientist but is better known for his artistry. It's Leonardo da Vinci and he painted the Mona Lisa, which you can see right there. But he also painted the Vitruvian Man, which is that guy who like has his arms up and you can see his whole body and sometimes they have him in like um, the doctor's office and places like that. And what makes Leonardo da Vinci a scientist is that to create all of his art, he actually used science, somewhat like how um, Be Beatrix Potter did uh, when I read the other book about her, how he took measurements of all anatomical you know, be things like arms and how far the arm was from the shoulder and the leg was from the neck. He used real measurements, which is a form of science, to actually create his art, which is what made it look so realistic. And so today you'll hear all about how he was a scientist and an artist and an engineer and loved technology. And so I think we hit them all. Oh, math, of course, math. I've talked about math already. So if you think about STEM or STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, art and math he hits them all he's sort of like the creator of steam <laughs> so here we go it is i am leonardo da vinci from the ordinary people change the world series which you can also find on pbs uh we have um xavier riddle and the secret museum these things are connected which is so much fun it is by brad metzler and illustrated by christopher eliopoulos here we go I am Leonardo da Vinci. I was born in Italy in a small town called Vinci. People think da Vinci is my last name, but it's just where I'm from. In Italian, da Vinci means from Vinci. What are you looking at, Leonardo? Everything. Back in the 1400s, Italy was one of the most exciting places to live. Something called the Renaissance was happening, and people started using art, science, architecture, and even politics to see things in a brand new way. Look at that building. Look at these carvings. Look at these silks. Look at this painting. As a young boy, I went hiking one day and found this amazing cave. I wanted to know what was inside. Whoa. At first I tried peeking in, but the cave was too dark. I bent the other way, but still couldn't see anything. The closer I looked, the darker it seemed, like shadows themselves would swallow me whole. Right there, I felt two things, fear and desire, because I really wanted to know what was in there. Standing at that cave, I made my decision. If you want to learn something new, you have to follow your curiosity. The rewards are unimaginable. Whoa. To, to see a mighty creature like that, I realized just how powerful nature could be. Back then, the richest kids with the proper brat background went to the best schools. I didn't. At the abacus school, I learned some math, but mostly I was self-taught. By teaching myself, I was more open to new experiences and ideas. As a result, I didn't think like everyone else. I didn't even write like everyone else. I was left-handed, which back then was considered weird and odd. Instead of writing left to right, I wrote right to left, drawing each letter backward like this. Use a mirror to read it. It's perfect. It may seem like secret code, but it wasn't. It was just a way to keep the ink from smudging, a common practice back then. I wasn't the best student. I'd get easily distracted and bored unless I was doing something creative like art. Whoa, you drew that? I did. You're pretty good. I still have a lot to learn. 
When I was 14, my father showed some of my drawings to one of the best local artists, Andrea del Verrocchio. You, your son drew that? He did. Pretty good, huh? I am astonished. I became his apprentice, which is fancy way of saying he became my teacher. He taught me how to mix paints, draw and sculpt from models, and work with machinery on a large project. Most important, in Verrocchio's workshop, there were people talking about anatomy, geometry, architecture, and antiquities. Plus, there were books on every subject. You can put a circle inside a square like this. My first preserved art was a shield I painted for someone. I'll put a monster on it like a dragon that breathes fire and spits poison. To make it realistic, I used more than paint. I took real body parts from lizards, snakes, bats, crickets, grasshoppers, and even butterflies and attached them piece by piece. Looks real, right? <clears throat> oh no. The smell was so bad my father kept the shield and bought a new one for the client. What's that smell? Art! <laughs> it wasn't my best work, but the shield did sell and was eventually owned by the Duke of Milan. You don't become an artist overnight. It takes practice and patience, drawing things over and over again. Again, draw it again. In my art, I wanted things to look like they did in real life. So I'd practice drawing drapes with plenty of folds and shadows. The key was mastering this. Chiaroscuro, which means light dark in Italian and explains how I used light and shadows to make things look real and Sfumato, which means making the lines blurry so it looks even more realistic. If you do it right, you get this. Ta-da! That's my real drawing. This one right here. That is a drawing, not a photo. Incredible. Was I perfect? Not at all. I get so distracted and sometimes felt so alone that I didn't finish many of my paintings. And when I did finish, I didn't think the work was very good. Another bad one. You really think that's bad? No matter what I was working on, I'd carefully examine each subject, studying every detail. I was especially interested in birds. Look how a bird's wings are more curved at the front. Is that how they fly? What do their tails do? Is that how they steer? He really looks closely at things, doesn't he? My greatest strengths were curiosity and observation. Everything I saw, I put in my notebooks. Look at the dragonfly. When it flies, its front wings are higher than its rear wings are lower. He really wants to learn about flying, doesn't he? I wanted to learn about everything. Each day was an opportunity to observe something new. I'd fill my notebooks with drawings, ideas, art, and anything else I found interesting including long lists of things I wanted to do. Why is the sky blue? Why are fish in the water faster than a bird in the sky? Why do our eyes only see in a straight line? How do clouds form? What's yawning? What is yawning? <laughs> How did I find the answers? By observing every detail. At the top of Monte Rosa, I figured out why the sky is blue. It's light reflecting off particles in the air. More list, observe a goose's foot, describe the jaw of a crocodile, describe the tongue of a woodpecker. The more questions you ask, the more answers you'll find. Over time, in addition to being an artist, I became an architect. This was a real bridge I designed. And an engineer, accurate and precise maps, who wants to take a trip? We've got these things called roads. <laughs> he invented the crank as well to move stuff. And a musician. I designed a new instrument, a cross between an organ and a violin, the viola organista, which is really fun thing to say. And a scientist. To understand our bodies, I studied bones and organs, making detailed drawings. By looking at how water flows on the sides of a river, I figured out how the heart works and how it pumps. Did you know the heart is a muscle? And a dentist. By studying teeth, I was a pioneer of dentistry. Say, ah. 
Wait, did I mention I was a scientist? Look at this human arm. When it bends just right, it resembles a bird's wing. Isn't that beautiful? And of course, I was also an inventor. Every new piece of information led to new breakthroughs. Check out my designs. The tank, the submarine, scuba gear, and a hang glider. An early try at a helicopter. This tent covered with cloth is an early parachute, even though no one had ever flown before. And speaking of flying, check out these wings based on bats. Whoa! What are you doing now? Trying to figure out how the face works. Which muscles open your eyes? Which ones raise your brows? And which ones create the perfect smile? <laughs> this is my most famous painting, the Mona Lisa. I worked on it for 16 years, carrying it with me until the day I died. For over a decade, I'd repaint it, trying to fill it with every amazing new thing I learned about humans and nature. Today, people wonder who she is, who she was. She wasn't anyone famous. She was just like the rest of us, ordinary and amazing, full of mysteries and questions, just like the world around us. He used sfumato to blur the edges of her mouth. It's what makes her smile change depending on how you look at it. In my life, people called me a genius, a renaissance man. They also said I was weird and odd. That's not a bad thing. Nothing amazing happens by thinking like everyone else. Look closely at nature. No two trees are the same. No two humans are e either. What makes no one, that means no one will see the world as you do. That's not weird or odd. It's beautiful. Do what hasn't been done before. Build what hasn't been built before. When you do, no one will be able to look away. Today, there are 7,200 pages of Leonardo da Vinci's notebooks filled with ideas about art, flight, geology, botany, anatomy, biology, and mechanics. Look down here, that's the Vitruvian man I mentioned. Back in 1994, Bill Gates bought one of the notebooks for $30 million. Throughout his life, Leonardo was obsessed with flight. He loved birds so much, he'd buy them and immediately set them free. The very last thing Leonardo wrote in his notebook, notebook was a math problem. He left it unfinished and wrote, etc., because the soup is getting cold. Some of his ideas didn't become realities for another 500 years. His theories on the human heart were finally proven right in the 1960s. And his wings? They inspired Bill Finger and Bob Kane's design for Batman. It's true. Without Leonardo da Vinci, there would be no Batman. <laughs> I loved many things. Whatever your passions are, follow them all. Sometimes crazy ideas are the best ideas, even the ones that fail. My wings didn't help me fly. My scuba gear didn't let me breathe underwater. My pre-helicopter never took off. But over time, as technology and innovation caught up with my ideas, every single one of them worked. Stay curious, ask questions, look closely, and always be daring. I am Leonardo da Vinci, and I know that beautiful ideas are, that new ideas are beautiful. Well, friends, thank you so much for reading with me all about Leonardo da Vinci. Right here you see The Last Supper, which he painted in 1495. That was a long time ago. I had a copy of this above my, well, it was above my brother's bed when I was growing up, and I had no idea who it was painted by. But uh, it's just amazing how many lives and people and things that he still touches without you even realizing it. So I hope you enjoyed hearing all about the STEAM creator, science, technology, engineering, and math, Mr. Leonardo da Vinci. And thank you so much for reading with me, friends. Bye.